Hey, I'm uh, finishing up those plates, so I wanted to show everybody how I press them in the foam. So I'm going to do that now. Hey, hey Georgia, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, and Jamie, um, Jamie just sent me a message. She went, she went to Michael's and already bought templates. Hey, <laughs> so from this morning after I scoped, she already went out to Michael's and got herself some templates, which is awesome. Like. She's like holding, not holding back. And I don't know if she can get here. Hi, Den Hi Denise. I don't know if she's gonna be able to join us because she's picking her kids up from the bus stop. But I'm gonna show you the template she just bought and then I'm gonna show you a finished plate, which wasn't what I planned to do, but since I just saw that message. Hey, you're going tomorrow. I know there's gonna be a massive run on templates at Michael's. They're not gonna know what's going on. And, <sighs> So this is the template basically that she just bought. I think a little smaller, maybe. But it's this platter, this platter template form. And it's pretty big. Um, I think it's a 17 inch long template. And thank you. Hi, hey, thanks for tuning in. Um, so here's a second. This piece is a second, so you'll have to excuse the glazing on it. So this is what it looks like done. And you can see why it's a second. The glaze, I was way thick there and it didn't work. But this is a bit different. So this is what one of those platters from this template, I don't know if I can get it all in, template platter. So you can see how much they shrink. I, I am also an illustrator. Yes, my, my other half of my life, I'm an illustrator and an author. Jamie, Jamie, hey, Jamie. This is like the platter, the template you got, right? This scroll shape. Where did I got this at Michael's? So here's, I'm scooting back so you can see. You know what? Someone, um, someone who shared, someone share this for me. Yes, thank you for sharing so that I can follow along on my iPad. Um, yeah, so I got this at Michael's. You're studying illustration and BFX. Cool. Yeah. So this is the before Jamie, the template. It's a different one than I slightly, but here's a finished piece. So it's a platter, no foot ring on this one, mind you. See, it's just the back. Yeah. So the back's flat, but you can see, you know, the sides are popped up a bit. You can see the angles. Yeah. So this is what you get. It shrinks down a little bit, but still, I mean, look, I'm holding this platter in front of me. It's still pretty big, right? So I wanted to show that to you when I saw, and you can do, I mean, this is just a cobalt blue glaze on stoneware. And um, I can't wait to see what yours looks like. So I'm gonna put this back. And then the other thing I was gonna do is, yeah, you're welcome. And the other thing I wanna do is a grenade preview. And Jamie, this is the silver you are asking. Let me get it up there. So you can see the silver on, and yeah, Jamie ordered a gold, but I think I think she'd like silver better. Yeah, I wear the silver all the time, and tomorrow I'm going to be making some of these guys and sticking them on the plates I'm going to press today, so you guys can check that out tomorrow. And I'll show you how I do it. Uh, I made a sprig mold, and I'll do another scope down the line on making your own sprig mold from either a carved piece or... Um, I'll tell you, I, I was in the military, so, and my husband was too. The yeah, silver's more wearable. So the grenades figure into my work with the idea of the beautiful and the deadly, you know, the platinum gem-like gorgeousness on a weapon of destruction, you know. So anyhow, that's, uh, tomorrow we'll do more grenade discussion, and, oh, well, it was an honor. So we'll do more grenade discussion tomorrow and we can talk more about the meaning behind the grenade and why I use it in my work. And I wanna, I wanna press these guys out. Hey, hey. All right, so I was, I was out today. I had to do other stuff than, yeah, thank you. So I wanted to show you doing the plates and I'm gonna, you did? Awesome. The cake plate. So here's a plate that I made this morning that I cut out. And I wanted to show you when it's ready. Now, I don't know if you remember this morning, but I did this and the piece was all floppy. If you look now, you can see the piece, it's kind of stiff a little bit. It's not floppy, but it's not anywhere near leather hard. I can still move it, but not 
um, not like, it won't flop down, right? So I'm going to press this out, and like I was showing this morning, I've got my little round disc, and I just line this up. Oh, by the way, I'm going to turn this back up because I hate talking to like only half my head there. So this afternoon I was driving, and someone was throwing away one of those fold-out chairs. They fold out to beds. They're like all foam when they're folded up, like a futon chair, but it's all foam. And when you fold it out, it's like a little tiny skinny bed. And I went by it and I was like, everybody that was watching my scope this morning would love one of those. So I didn't have a, I didn't have a way to get it to you guys or I would have stopped and grabbed it. But that's exactly like what you need is a cushion from an old sofa or something for your foam is perfect. It was a foam score, but I don't need it. So I didn't get it. And I have nobody I can give them to. But if anybody is driving up to Springfield, Vermont, there's one there on the side of the road. <laughs> you could go get one. I do not make the discs. The discs are also a purchase from a craft store, but you can. Um, and sometimes when I do really big pieces, I actually use a bat. Like my really big platters, the circle, I'll just use a wooden bat. So to press this out, I just line this up. Um, you know, yeah, I'm in Vermont. I'm in southern Vermont. I love Queechy. I, um, I grew up that way. Well, my mom's family's from up there. Cheaper to go to a fabric store, maybe, than coming to Vermont. <laughs> so I just use my fingers to gauge the distance. You could, uh, if you really need it to be exactly in the dead center, you totally could measure with a tape measure or something. But I eyeball it. Um, it doesn't need to be exact. All right, so here's the magic. Once it's lined up, even pressure, and I'm just going straight down. And see the sides pop up? Regular wood bat. So my sides have popped up. You see they're a little wonky, but I'll fix that once I pull it off. Right, this is just a wooden disc that I got from the hobby store, but you, um, you could cut your own if you have access. Yeah, so now I'm gonna slide slide this guy you can't really see the sliding part can you I'll, I'll move the camera so here it is now I slid it off the foam onto the bat Move that little and now I can take the bat out and you can see I'm gonna hold it see the sides are popped up so that made a plate and you could just leave it like this like you do not have to do anything else to this plate it's it's a great plate and you know, I have a bunch of these in the house that I use for every day because the foot kind of gets in the way of everyday plates for me. So now I just take the plate and I'm just gonna spin it around and I'm eyeballing the rim. I wanna get it even to make sure all sides are popped up the same amount and there's nothing wonky going on. Like there'll be a few spots where there might be a torque. They do stack better. And I have kids and they kind of just toss stuff and my kids unload the dishwasher and a foot would just be more like stuff to chip, right? All right, so this will set overnight with one of my lovely handmade baggies, cutting your own templates, stealing your cat's bed. <laughs> so this is just a piece of cloth that I filled with cat litter. You could use rice or beans or anything. And this was an old, t-shirt an old long sleeve t-shirt and you can cut your sleeves off and you just fill them up let me grab a different one that's a better example this one really looks like a sleeve so you just I've already shown this but like here's a sleeve right I tied one end in a knot then stole their litter that's right those poor cats one end in a knot fill it full of litter other end in a knot you don't even have to sew this is like non sewing people can totally handle this so this was the center part of the shirt. So like the square part, your left after you hack the sleeves off. Rogue socks, exactly. And all I did was lay the square down, filled it with some cat litter, gathered up the ends, and rubber band it, right? So I didn't waste any of the shirt. So this is ready for, to sit overnight. And what I do is I take a big sheet of dry cleaner plastic and I just put this on 
and I line these up and see you can kind of wiggle them around they're loosely filled the scope is not cat approved no sealing the cat bed sealing their litter so I just make sure that I have it pressed the litter is moving um, the little baggie is moving to the edge of the flat part of the plate use rice yeah you if you've got that much rice around or you only need a couple sure go for it and so now I set this on the shelf and that's done until tomorrow when I put the foot on. And I'll press more. Like I've got five more to press. So I'll finish those up and do all those. Next one. And so I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm going to zoom it in. Let's see if I can. I don't know if that's showing at all. So when I did my template, I pressed down a little bit and a slight bit of the cardboard back transferred. There's a little ripple thing happening here. I don't know, can you guys see that? Anyhow, I'll smooth that out later. So if you get any goobers or anything on the surface, don't freak because you're going to smooth it out later. Like tomorrow is when I'm going to smooth it out. So same thing as I did last time. So have to call your kiln patience. I missed I missed the beginning of that. All right, so I'm doing my lining up again. And then press. Here comes the magic. Look at that. It pops it right up. It's so awesome. And usually when you first do it, you can see you know what side is too high. Georgia, I know, I saw it show up. I saw the scope of Georgia's new kiln show up last night, but that's all I saw. It's like having a baby when you get a new kiln. It's so exciting. I'm going to slide this off. So I'll show you guys how I'm doing this. I don't know if I can zoom back anymore. So I have got this bat up against the foam, and I'm just using my body like to hold the bat because... I only have two hands and then you just slide the plate out onto the back. If I had extra hands it wouldn't have to do that. A baby shower. A kiln, a baby kiln shower. Alright so there's another one. Done. Look how fast that plate was though. If you think about like think about this morning if you were making a plate and you just rolled out your slab, cut your template, wait it a few hours, and then press it out and you're done. You know, the only thing I have left to do is tomorrow I'm going to smooth the edges, I'm going to put the foot on, and um, grenades. But that's it. That's all. That's all that's left to do. I mean, really, you could basically be done right now if you want it to be. <laughs> Did you name the kiln, Georgia? I missed that part. Georgia, did you name your kiln? I Do I sure form the edges? No, I just smooth them with a rib. Bernie, or Patience, Bernadette. Oh, tough. So I will go back in and... <laughs> so I'm going to go in tomorrow and I'll smooth the edges. And I use a red rib, one of the red... Um, why can't I think of Michael Sherrill's rib company? Uh... We all know the red ribs, so I'm going to use one of those red ribs and go and smooth the edges and then um, with a sponge hit anything else. But that's it. Mud tools, thank you. Yeah, I hate that when you know the name and like it falls out of your head. Yeah, I am climbing up on a stool if you guys hadn't noticed because my foam is so thick. And you don't need a foam this thick. Like this foam is really overkill. Oh, my grenade got out. I had to put it back. Um, <laughs> Quasimodo. That's awesome. All right, pressing time again. Let's see if this is good. I'm feeling like it's a little off. Okay, going. Kiln. We're buying kilns now. Everybody's buying kilns. So where to buy your kiln from?
Big Bertha. All right, I'm going to slide this one off. Shoo! I love how fast this is and that you get the uniform plate every time, that exact profile. <laughs> It's awesome. So that one. So if you don't, you need to do the edges now. So if you're going to um, make sure they're even, you need to do it right now or else it'll warp. Like if you check it later, like tomorrow once it's hardened all the way, you're not going to be able to adjust your edges. So you need to get them right now at this point. Because tomorrow will be too hard. Tomorrow, everything is set. Set in clay. Potters and puppets. They kind of go together, right? Oh, I only have a couple more to do. The great, yeah. Oh, I missed what he said. What'd you say, KP? I didn't see it. I missed the part. Ceramic puppets, totally. So we'll put on a show. That would be awesome. Oh, your first kiln that is very exciting. Pottery puppets making cakes. Oh, okay. Baking with clay puppets. <laughs> That, that would be something. I'm all in for that. An, uh, an Australian narrator. <laughs> so I also made a few tiny baby plates with the leftover clay. After I cut these all out, I had a tiny bit of clay left over. And so I made some little teeny guys I'll show you. And those, honestly, because they're so small, the smaller the piece, you can almost press those immediately. Yeah, pottery people name their kilns. It happens. So my, my big gas kiln out back's got a name. I don't know if KP Metrics remembers the name of my gas kiln. He can shout it out. He's not, he's not watching now. He's gone. Trogdor! That's right! He got it! I didn't know if you'd remember. Yeah, well, Trogdor's a dragon, you know. He likes to burn down <laughs> thatch roof cottages. <laughs> as long as he doesn't burn the burninator. Exactly. That's my kiln. The burninator. Mr. Sparkles? <laughs> Toasty. I didn't name my um, electric kiln. They just are named after their brand. One's an L&L and, &L and the other's a Scut. So it's just kind of like the L&L and, &L and the Scut. That's kind of lame. I have to give them a name. Sparkles Pancake. <laughs> yes, my scut kiln kiln will now be called Sparkles Pancake. Thanks. Hey, Melanie. Are there any cool kilns? Well, all kilns are hot, right? I'm going to check this guy. These are going great. They're hot and cool at the same time, right, guys? So here's the little baby plates. No, they're all hot. So these are the babies. These little teeny tiny guys. So these are sweet. Hey, Corey, hi. Thanks for jumping in. So these are going to be oof, this size. So here they are finished. Before, before, after. So the porcelain does shrink quite a bit. A quarter inch thick, right. 
Right. Maybe three eighths. Three eighths, I think. Yes, decals. Yeah, of course. So there's the after, there's the before. This is about three eighths of an inch. And this is after it fires, gets a little skinnier. Look. Well, you know, they weren't made from the same batch, so this one might have been a little thicker. But they look, I don't know, about the same. But that's the done. And that's a laser decal along with commercial decals and china paint. I add the foot ring the next day. So today that I, and I don't put the foot rings on these little guys. So here's like the foot ones. Yeah. So it's just an epoxy D-ring on the back. It's nothing fancy. This one, the babies, the small, I don't put foot rings on. The bigger ones, this size here. I throw the foot ring and add them and I threw the foot rings this morning which are over there setting up and I will add those on tomorrow morning and I'll scope that when I put those on. Here's a slightly smaller plate than that other one, the other big one that has the foot ring. So here's the same profile in a smaller form. There's the foot ring. So there's the thrown foot ring right there. Add it on. So there's your difference with Where's the other? <laughs> oh, bye. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in. So here's no foot ring plate. Foot ring plate. So that's what you get. And the add on top. Yeah, and these were sprig molded um, rifles that I added, which tomorrow I'm adding sprig molded grenades to the plates I'm pressing today. So that's what I'll be doing tomorrow. And I might talk a little bit about making your own sprig molds, which is super easy. I make mine, they're bisque molds. A sprig mold, it's a mold that you make and you press clay into to get a shape. So for this rifle, uh, I was in the military and I do this whole idea of service, gender and identity um, and gender roles. So it's like I'm putting a play on the fine porcelain that would be used by a woman in the home in her traditional role of wife and mother and provider with the image, a uh, more contemporary image of a female soldier serving her country and it also challenges ideas of gender roles and identity and, and where someone belongs. So I have this very beautiful feminine plate with this really powerful strong military image on it. Do you guys ever have a throwdown? Like, yeah, making pots, like, see who can make the most. We we used to do that back in college. Like, that would be the big thing, is we would have throwdowns. We could have a scope down. How would that go? How would that work? We would what? Everybody would have a time limit, and it'd be, okay, you got 15 minutes, make some pots. How many can you make? All right, someone has to set up the parameters for that thing. No, but <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm flipping that over. I like this side better. Mm, yeah. Speed pottery. Uh, no, I know it's not fair for those who don't throw. And I, I don't throw as much as I used to. I'm, I do a combo now, but it would be a huge challenge. Production. All right, so there's a little, I did a baby. So as I was saying, with the ones this small, you don't have to wait. You could, you cut the little guys out and, I missed that comment. Um, you guys can cut these out and almost press them immediately because they are so small they hold themselves up. You don't have to worry about them falling back down. It's time to find my big back. There it is. So for the little ones, you don't really have to slide them off either. You can just pick them up and move them. And then tomorrow I'll fix all the schmutz going on. Like, it's kind of messy. A flaw in that dish. Um, well, the sides aren't that deep. It's going to be more, it's a plate. If I pressed maybe harder and if I pushed the sides up, sure. I mean, I could turn it into a more bowl type. Why don't I try one? I got one. Why don't we do it? 
Toby, we're going to do it. Let's see what happens. All right? It's happening live. We're going to turn a plate into a bowl. Because Toby wants to cook a flan in it. So we'll see, right? It'll be a flan bowl. All right, it's going down. It's happening right now, right before your eyes. This flat little disc here of clay is going to become a bowl. Ready? What do you think? It's, get your flan on. Check it out. That's pretty deep. All right. Let me fo just follow me or add me to add me. All right. So now after this is done, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining. We got a bowl, right? I don't, let me put it on the bat and I'll hold it up to you guys and you can see if that's deep enough for flan. Okay. Toby can be the judge and we can compare it to the plate next door. All right. I don't want him to fall off. Don't, don't slide. So plate here, plate, but deeper. I mean, it's really just flip the sides up. I wouldn't, maybe need a bigger piece of clay, but, ooh, I got an idea. Hold on. Wait, I got something I haven't tried yet. Where'd I put it? So I bought a thing that I haven't used that yet from the hobby store. There it is. Ha, <laughs> I bought this. I bought this, you guys. It needs to be deeper, look. So this is a this is a floral ball, like, wait, it's called, oh, Silks and Naturals Floral Craft Foam Ball. Look, look, so here's your foam ball. What if I press the ball into the slab? Like, uh, right? We can do that. I haven't tried this yet. Um, I'm not even taking the plastic off it because the foam has a weird, crazy texture. I'm gonna go for it. I'm totally using the, the flan plate. Anyhow, all right, get a ball, get a ball. Here we go. We're going to do it. Ready? All right, everybody, hold on. We're going. I don't know what this is going to do. Well, that sounds terrible. I've never used this before. Some weird stuff's happening. Look at my plate. What is that? Ah, what happened? Yeah, I know, to avoid sticking. I got too excited, Corey. Did you notice? I kind of went with it. <laughs> it's a bowl! I'm flipping it over. I'm taking it out. Yeah, the sticking's gonna happen. Damn it. No! Wait. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no! Wait! It came out! Oh, and I dropped the ball. Alright, so look. We have a bowl, but we have a problem. Not really a problem, but we have an issue that will have to be addressed down the line. Because the bottom, it's like a jellyfish. It's round. It's not flat, so it won't sit. Right, right. So now when I throw, I just throw some little mini tiny cylinders that I'll cut off and make a mini foot ring. But it's a bowl. It's not perfect. It would need some work, I think, for me to actually make these. Yeah, I could roll little... Um, could roll out little bits of clay and stick it on. Hey, thanks for tuning in. So the ball does work. I mean, it it's it's getting so out of shape right now because I'm flopping around, but that would work, right? Pottery on the fly. It's happening right before your eyes. You never know what's going down here. Oh, little sure, you could epoxy little feet on. Um, you know. It's cute. It's goofing off. So anyhow, I did buy that ball thinking of making bowls with it on the foam, but I hadn't tried it yet. So I tried it and I do want to go further. Fabric over the ball. Yeah, you're right. That would be great. And then I was actually thinking of taking the ball, a photo. I know. I was thinking of taking the ball pressing it in really hard and getting this shape, like the ball shape, a really good one, and then pull it off and letting it uh, harden and firing it through to bisque, so I almost get a bisque uh, bowl, basically, right? A bisque bowl. I mean, you could use a bisque bowl. Could make, 
A London bus. Well, I mean, you could make anything out of clay. A wood ball and cut a flat bottom and then press it down. And then you'll have the flat part in the side. But I wonder if where it hits, it would um, homo mold. <laughs> that's, that's a great autocorrect. <laughs> Jamie, do you have your homo mold? That's horrible. Why is that so funny? just terrible a hump mold it's <laughs> a home mold a hump mold is a mold like I'll show you this is show and tell night right this is not what I expected to do here's a hump mold it's a mold that you lay you kind of hump clay onto right it forms a hump so you stick it on there like that See? <laughs> Jamie, autocorrect is not working for you today. No, not in the slightest. It's killing me. So, um, so why? Yeah, I know. So I, I'm just sitting here thinking, why did I buy that ball? I have one in my studio that I made that this was thrown on the wheel as a bowl. And when I trimmed it, I just trimmed this, right? I trimmed it completely smooth to get this rounded surface. All right, this piece of clay is gonna just like die. It's like, ah, stop pressing me. You're right, um, but this clay was, return the ball. I know, I'm taking that ball back. I want my, I want my dollar 75 back, damn it. All right, let's go for this. I used a Dolan tool to trim it. Um, so there we go. There it is, squished on the mold. And it is very jellyfish-like. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's much better. That ball, I was, I don't know, I saw it in the store and I thought, oh, this will work. This is a bowl shape, right? Half of a ball, half of a sphere. It's like a toadstool. Yeah, so you can see, kind of... Clay jelly. Clay jellies. Clay jellies. Yeah, that would be something totally different. So I can let this set. You know what? I'll leave it sitting for a little while on this to stiffen up. And then tomorrow I'll show you guys the results. Like what happens, right? You did the... Ama oh, what? Did you go buy a foam ball while we were on the scope? Because that's crazy. <laughs> Oh, you bought you bought one before and you thought you could totally use a foam ball if you didn't have a hump mold, right? Oh, months ago. Yeah, I bought mine, ooh, like a couple weeks ago. The clay jellies could go with your seahorses, yeah. All right, and the cool thing about this is once it's pressed in, it just sits on itself to dry, but not too long, because if I leave it on here too long, it's going to crack. Um... And I wonder if that's not some of Judy's problems, but I'm not, I'm not going to get into Judy's cracking issues on the scope because it would, it's too much for me. All right, what's left? I have got one more big plate to press. Yeah, show your seahorse. I've got one more big plate. Yeah, the rest of And I'm not going to mess this one up. I am just going to do this seriously, and no bowls are going to happen from this Although I have bigger hump molds that I could press into it, but we're not doing that. It's not happening. All right, because this guy, I've got a plan for this plate, so I don't want to screw it up. Yeah, no silliness. This is serious pottery time. I can't goof off. I've got to do this. i got to think, right? I gotta measure with my fingers exactly. I can't screw it up. That looks right. I'm trying to get this. There we go. You guys are going for a ride. There we go. All right, the last plate getting pressed for the night. <sighs> now jump, ready? Down, done. Look at the sides pop up. It's so awesome every time, every time. Every time it does it, I love it.
It's like a little bit of glee. Like, woohoo, yay! I made a plate. From a flat piece of clay, I made a plate. Thank you, I know. The sad thing is I get excited every day about this. And I do it all the time. So it's not like it's the first time I do it. It's like, like playing with your dog in the ball. They're like, ooh, a ball, a ball. And I'm like, ooh, a plate, a plate. I made a plate. Like, you know, 30 years from now, I'll be like, ooh, I made a plate. Yeah. <laughs> you know what tempers me? I have kids. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, mom, you made a plate. Mm-hmm. It's great. Well, thank you. All right. So there we go. Another plate. So I pressed out six, six plates. One little guy. Bye. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out with me. One little plate, one jellyfish bowl thing that we don't know how that's going down. We'll see that tomorrow. So I'm going to cover this guy with plastic. So this plastic, how I dry them, I'm going to show you right now. The jellyfish the best. I know, it's probably going to crack. So I, I cover these with plastic. This plastic is either, you can either get dry cleaner plastic. Bye, Toby. Thanks for hanging out. Um, dry cleaner plastic, or you know what this was? This was the window film you get to cover your windows in the winter. Like they sell that at Home Depot, right? And so when I, my studio is in a barn, and I pull down the plastic in the spring, and I say, oh, you're just saying goodbye. You're not going. Gotcha. 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 So drying, covered with plastic, and I'll weigh it down with my little baggies that I make. Let me grab another. Give me a couple. So these are smaller ones, so I'll use like three little bags to cover the surface, because I want it to stay flat. Actually, maybe only two on this guy. Yeah. And so I'll leave these covered. Yes, right. You're getting sucked into clay world. There's no escape. It will go in the kiln um, maybe in about two weeks. These bags are... This was a sleeve. A shirt sleeve that I cut off and tied knots in the ends and filled with cat litter. But you could use sand, you could use rice, you could use beans, anything you've got. Like, that's it. So I will weigh the center down so it doesn't pop up on me. Um, that doesn't matter. The plastic, it's not, eh, it's not gonna matter. Like, that little bit of wrinkle, it's not a big deal. The plate's kind of already set up a bit. And tomorrow I'm gonna add the foot and I'll smooth anything down that's popped up. Yeah, no, it'll be good, I promise. I, I have done it a couple times with the creases. And then I just sit this, then I'm just gonna sit this on the shelf. And that's it, that's it for the night. And then tomorrow morning, I'm gonna fix this a bit. It, tomorrow morning I'm going to put the foot ring on, which I threw earlier. And um, as an extra bonus, I'm putting grenades on the plate, like as a treat, right? Because we all want grenades on our plates, or should. So this is just going to sit over here. And I'm going to do that to all my pieces. And that's it. That's all I got. That's it. Yeehaw. That's my night. Grandkids call you Mima. Yeah, some people call their grandma Mima. Um, you know, that's good. All right, so that's all I have here. I have nothing else going on. Um, your jaw? My jaw, do I have clay on me? Yeah. All right, guys, I'm going. Um, I will catch you all in the morning when I come in and I put feet and grenades on and finish the rims and maybe we'll have a little discussion about um, why I use the grenade, you know, and maybe some sprig mold stuff, you know, go Army. Well, I was Air Force, but eh, Army's good too, so I'll have a good night. You guys do the same wherever you are. Have a great night and I'll see you all tomorrow. All right. Bye. Woohoo! Hurrah, Air Force, right? Okay. Bye, guys.